Hello, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. We are so glad you joined us today during this digital age. You could have tuned in anywhere else, but you chose PG, and we are incredibly grateful. Here's our pleasant planner for this week. Now here's our pastor, Dr. Aaron Letcher, with this week's Relevant Word. We're glad that you have joined us on today, and we pray uh, that this uh, worship service and this preaching opportunity says something that is purposeful and meaningful to you. Uh, as we talk about God's Word, uh, let's first pray about God's Word. God, we thank you for this time that you have allotted for us. Uh, God, we pray that the time that you have allotted for us uh, is used in a purposeful way. 
Uh, God, we pray that someone is blessed and some life is changed. And God, we pray that this time that you have given us is not taken for granted. God, I pray that you guide my mouth and guide my mind and guide this word so that it can hit your intended target. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God, amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would go with me to uh, the synoptic gospel of Matthew, Matthew the 16th chapter, Matthew the 16th chapter, Matthew the 16th chapter, and we will read uh, verses 24 and 25, 24 and 25. Now I'll pause for just a moment because I know that perhaps you may be thumbing through your Bible or you may be um, clicking in the words on you version. Uh, so I'll give you a moment just so that you can read the word of God with me. I'll be reading from the New International Version and the New International Version says it like this says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And just for a little while, brothers and sisters, I just want to use as a title for the time that we share, take up your cross and let's follow Jesus. And I just want to use for short, take up your cross. Tap your neighbor, tap whoever that you are watching this virtual worship service with and just say, hey, take up your cross. Take up your cross, take up your cross. Brothers and sisters, my grandfather always told me that some things in life you cannot go over, you cannot go under, but you must go through. And I know that in this life, many times we like to take the easier route. We like to take the route that is with less suffering, less conflict, and less uh, issues that brothers and sisters that uh, cause us stress. But brothers and sisters, what the text is suggesting to us and what Jesus is sharing is that he is uh, allowing us to get to that place where brothers and sisters that we go through suffering and embrace it because it is something that will be of help to us in our Christian maturity. As we walk through this text, brothers and sisters, there are a few things that this text Te uh, attempts to teach us and first of all as I look at it we see the enigma of the cross there is the enigma of the cross as we look at the text Jesus discourse with the disciples was mysterious and not only mysterious it was paradoxically mysterious Jesus conversation seemed to be perplexing and what he was saying seemed to be upside down. And many times, one of the things that I share with you is, brothers and sisters, that is what happens when you really and truly meet Jesus. He seems to turn our worlds upside down, but in actuality, Jesus is changing our lives to right side up. His words change things. You know, brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes into our lives, he changes things. He, he changes them to the exact opposite. You know, when the songwriter says, he turned my midnights into days. You, you all remember that psalmist that says, he picked you up when you were down. You all know that psalmist that said that he picked up a downtrodden heart. You know, Jesus is known for turning our lives upside down and then right side up. Jesus is known 
for making enigmatic assertions and announcements. And in this text, he makes an enigmatic uh, announcement that are backed by authentic and evident actions. When he said in verse 25, for those who want to save their lives will lose it. Those who lose their lives for my sake will find it. This is an enigmatic announcement. And we are, uh, brothers and sisters, if we look at Jesus and we look at the text holistically and we look at our sable skin savior, much of what he says in scripture is adverse to human logic. It opposes reason. You all walk with me if you will. You all know Jesus says some things that are upside down, that are outside of the realm of human uh, practicality. You all know those times when Jesus said stuff like, love them that hate you. You all remember those times where he says the last shall be first and the first shall be last. You all remember those times where Jesus says, bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. That's some upside down stuff. And here Jesus is again in this particular pericope. He's saying some upside down stuff. Don't run from suffering, but embrace suffering. It's important to know that faith starts where logic ends. Brothers and sisters, I know we think we have it all worked out, but we ought to trust God in such a way and trust him and know that he is working it, for, uh, working it out for us even while we are thinking through our plans. None of these statements seem to be rational, but it's important to know, again, that faith starts where logic fails. A lot of stuff does not seem logical in the eye of God, or in the eye of humanity, rather, but in the eye of God, uh, it is totally rational. To say God uh, is not logical is not to say that God is illogical, but it is to say that God is beyond logic. In other words, what I'm saying to you, uh, just like the scriptural text says, when he talks to humanity, he says that my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Even as far up as the heavens are above the earth, that's how far up my thoughts are above, over, and beyond your thoughts. Brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is sometimes Jesus, sometimes the Lord's thoughts seem illogical to us, but it's perfectly logical to Jesus Christ. Anytime one plus one plus one equals one, <laughs> brothers and sisters, in our logic, that equals four. But in God's logic, it equals one. One, the Father, one, the Son, and one, the Holy Ghost. You all remember what the seasoned saints said. They all equal one. So here is one of the tensions of the text. God calls us to take up our cross. But although Jesus calls us to take up our own cross, here is the paradox in the text. If we look at the paradox in the text, this is mysterious in that, brothers and sisters, we've got to understand that although Jesus Christ calls us to carry our cross, one of the things that we must understand as we bear the cross that we have that you cannot carry your own cross by yourself. Uh, yeah, I said it, you can't carry, even though Jesus said it, you cannot carry your own cross by yourself. 
Somebody say, well, you're questioning what Jesus said. Well, I challenge you to look at the text just a little bit closer. Allow me to restate that. You can't carry your own cross by yourself. Jesus calls us to take up our own cross, but the actuality is that we can't carry our cross by ourselves. I know that because the same Savior who summons us to sweat under the saddle of the cross is the same Savior who on his way to Golgotha and who's on, who was on his way to Golgotha's hill was not able to carry his own cross himself. I'm about to get happy in here. Brothers and sisters, what I'm telling you is that Jesus, although he is calling us to carry our own cross, what I want you to know that you can't carry it on your own because Jesus could not even carry his own cross to go Gotha's hill. I'm not here to debate with you. So I point you to text. You all remember in Matthew 27, 32, Simon of Cyrene uh, was compelled to help Jesus to carry his cross. So what then is the text attempting to teach us? I'm persuaded that one of the things or one of the enigmas of the cross is this. Your cross is meant to take you down. Let me, let me say that again because somebody perhaps missed it. You probably were cooking bacon and probably talking to your neighbor. It's okay. Uh, I bless God for you that you uh, thought enough of Pleasant Green to tune in. But let me say that one, one time again. I want you to know that the cross that is for you and the person I'm pointing, I'm talking to you. The cross that you bear is meant to bring you down. That's the example that Jesus was try Christ was trying to share with us. God knows that not one of us, not one of the pleasant parishioners, not one of his children can carry the cross that he or she takes up when deciding to follow Jesus Christ. In other words, life at some point in your life will get so heavy that it's gonna not only take you to your knees, it'll push you down to your face and put your face all the way in the mud. God knows that you can carry your cross alone. Now I know there are many believers that think they can do it on their own. There are fans, brothers and sisters, that uh, think they can do it. There are some who desire to be followers. They can't do it on their own, but only a minority desire to be disciples. And even then, as you move from the place of being a, a, a believer, even though you move to a place of being a fan, and then you move to a place of being a follower, and then you finally find yourself in the spot of a disciple, even then, you cannot carry your cross alone. Brothers and sisters, I think it's important to interject that you can be a believer without carrying the cross, but you cannot be a disciple without sharing your load. In this life, on this side of the Jordan River, this life was designed for us to carry a load. We ain't in this thing so that we can kick up our heels and chill with lemonade in the shade, but in this life, it is designed for us to carry a cross. In other words, we've got to have some hardships. We've got to have some heartaches. We've got to shed some tears. We've got to have some headaches. Brothers and sisters on this side of the Jordan River, some things in your life may not go as you plan them to go, but that's why we are here, so that we can understand what it means to carry a cross. 
Therefore, the truth of the matter, I'm getting away from myself today, the truth of the matter is that many of us fail to realize that the same cross that we pick up is the same cross that will one day bring us to our knees. And I know Dr. Uh, Eric Winston, uh, when he was teaching me in Memphis Theological Seminary, one of the things that he used to bless me with is he says that uh, if we stay on our knees, God will allow us to stand on our feet. I wish somebody would help me praise today. Brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is that if you stay on your knees in prayer, when hard times come, God will allow you to stand up on your feet six feet tall and knowing that the Lord will deliver you. I'm almost done. Brothers and sisters, our cross will bring us down. And what I mean is the same cross that we bear will one day bring us uh, down. What I mean is our crosses are designed to bring us to our own human, uh, it, 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 designed, it is designed to bring us to the end of our own human strength our own human endurance. It is designed to bring the worst out of you. Our crosses are designed to put us all the way down. It's designed to zap all of our human energies, leaving us helplessly depending on the Lord. One thing the Apostle Paul reminds us of in 2 Corinthians 13 and 4. Jesus was crucified through weakness. In other words, it is when we become totally weak and totally self-abased. In other words, brothers and sisters, it is when we give up to the Lord, when we give up to God, and when we witness the crucifixion of our own pride and our own self-device. And out of our weakness, we are made strong by the faith in the Lord. As we peer into this particular passage and peruse this portion of uh, this pericope, the next thing that I discover is the example of the cross. I, I know I'm holding y'all a little bit today, but y'all just, if you get tired of me, fast forward. The example of the cross. There is the example of the cross. In our text, Jesus tells his disciples to take up your cross and follow me. And what we've already discussed in the comprehensive narrative of the cross is that Jesus already buckles under the weight and the pressure of his own cross and he needs somebody else to help him. What this account is attempting to imbue unto us as an example of the text is the cross teaches us how to deny ourselves. In other words, being a believer is not about what you want. It's all about what the Lord wants in your life. I, I think I, I need to say that again because there are so many believers, they want what they want when they want it. But what I challenge you to do as you grow as a believer to understand that Following the Lord and being a disciple is not about what you want. It's about what God wants. That's why Jesus said uh, in his prayer, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. And many times, I, I believe just my experience in the African-American and uh, uh, whatever color American or whatever color or nationality it is, there are many folks that just want their will to be done, not recognizing that God has a will for us. 
The cross teaches us to deny ourselves. If we pay attention to the text, we see that Peter was attempting to detour Christ from the cross. A lot of times we tend to want uh, to avoid affliction. A lot of us want to take the easy route. Brothers and sisters, bearing the cross means dying to oneself. Even Jesus, when he prayed, he says, Lord, I don't want to uh, bear this cross. I, no, what he said, I don't want to drink of this cup. But what he meant was he didn't want to go through the suffering and affliction that was in the cup. But then one of the things that Jesus teaches us in his example is he says, not my will, but thine will be done. Dying to oneself means bearing Christ's reproach crucifying the world and the flesh as we follow him in obedience. We're pressing on to a close, brothers and sisters. But Peter was about to learn that suffering and glory always go together. You can't have glory without having something that's gory. Let, let, me, let me repeat that, brothers and sisters. You... You cannot experience glory without having something in your life that is gory. Somebody said that you know, you, 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 you see my glory, but you don't see my story. But brothers and sisters, in life, you have to go through your story. I'm just about done, and I pray that this has blessed someone as much it ha as it had blessed me in my study. First Peter, uh, you all remember First Peter uh, 4 and 12, and, uh, and then we go uh, from 12 to 19, and then First Peter 5, uh, 1 and 10, it says at this particular juncture, Peter didn't know why uh, he had to go through some things but brothers and sisters, we've got to understand that Peter went through some things so that he can be of better service to God. What's more is that Jesus is not calling us simply to learn self-discipline. Before we take up our cross, we've got to understand that it's something deeper than that. Jesus was asking us to deny ourselves. This means to deny our own ability. It, it's not so much about denying material things, but what it is about is denying our own ability to carry our own cross in our own strength. What I want you to understand, if you don't leave with nothing else today, understand that your cross was designed to bring you down and you can't carry your cross by yourself. You need somebody to help you. I'm done, but I also want to just leave you with an inspiring word. I also want to leave you and let you know <laughs> that we are also empowered by the cross. You're empowered by the cross. I know that the cross is something that uh, many of us don't understand. And if we, if we look back uh, at the historical references of the cross, the historical references of the cross, it, it was a sign of execution. If we look back at the historical references of the cross, it made people to hang there and die, bleed to death. Brothers and sisters, the historical references of the cross meant death. But how does an old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering, 
and shame become a symbol of salvation? How does a memento of misery become a monument of emancipation? How does a trademark of torment become a trophy of triumph? Brothers and sisters, even as we look at the life of Brianna Taylor, brothers and sisters, understand that that is not the end, that God still reigns. And I want you to know, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 3 and 20, that the Lord is able. I want you to understand this about our cross that we bear, uh, even when we bear uh, the cross because of the color of our skin. I want you to know this, that the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 3 and 20, that the Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Brothers and sisters, it is important to give God the glory in the church by Jesus Christ and all generations. I want you to understand that in life, you're going to need some help. But be empowered. Because when you bear the cross, you're not only bearing the cross for the Lord, you're being connected to the Lord. I want you to understand that when you bear the cross, you not only share in his sufferings, but you share in his victory. You not only share in the hurts, but you share in the heralds. You not only share in the troubles and the tears, but you share in the triumphs. And when we unite our crosses with his, he unites us and brings us closer to the Savior. That's why the seasoned saints used to say, nearer, my God, to thee. Therefore, not only, brothers and sisters, we are not only experience suffering, but what I want you to understand, that in Christ, we experience the victory of God. I'm done. But every now and then in life, you're going to need some help. Joseph needed help as he carried the burden of betrayal. Moses needed help as he asked the children of Israel to help hold up his arms. Nehemiah needed help as he asked them to help him build the walls. Paul needed help as he was blind. Jesus Christ also needed help. So therefore, brothers and sisters, you need help. But one of the things that blesses us is that in our help and in our weakness, the Lord makes us strong. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. If you desire to be a member of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, we ask that you reach out uh, to one of our pleasant parishioners if you know them personally or if you don't know them personally and you got their phone number, reach out to them. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. We ask that you do that uh, if you don't have uh, our information. Also, brothers and sisters, uh, we are sharing with you if you're wanting to be a part of the body of Christ through the ministry of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Brothers and sisters, you can connect with us on, uh, through our email, and it is shown here. It is shown here. We are asking you to connect with us through our email. It is shown here. 
and we'll return a response to you within the next 48 hours. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Also, we just want to celebrate. We want to celebrate how you have been generous in your giving. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. We want you to continue in your generosity. Thank God for you. The word of God says, why don't you try them and see that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out uh, windows uh, of uh, blessing. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is faithful to us when we are faithful to him. We thank God for our guests. We thank God for all of our guests. Thank you for tuning in. We are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people through five different tenets. And we thank you for tuning in on today. And brothers and sisters, we pray that this worship service has been inspirational. We pray that this uh, worship service has been encouraging. But most of all, I pray that this worship service has been in evoking, evoking you to live a life that is worthy in the sight of Jesus Christ. With that being said, brothers and sisters, I've enjoyed uh, sharing with you. I pray that you have enjoyed sharing with me. So let me whisper a word of benediction. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for smiling on us. Thank you for allowing us to be able to watch this ministry. God, we ask that you smile on this ministry. God, each person who is uh, here and God who is make themselves available to make this ministry grow and flourish. God, we ask that you give them an extra portion of the Holy Spirit. God, watch over our parishioners as they operate in this city. Uh, Lord God, we ask that you smile upon our law enforcement uh, who is righteous. God, we thank you for every parishioner. God, we ask now uh, that you keep them. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. May we all say virtually and together, amen. It's time to worship through giving. Give online at pgmbcstl.org or mail in your tithes and offering at the address below. Hopefully the word was relevant and relatable. If you'd like to connect to Christ through our church, shoot us an email at ghpruitt at gmail.com. We are always excited to reaffirm our relationship with you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.